Uh, Randy had the word study this morning, and they got stranded over in Corpus Christi, so didn't get to be here this morning. So rather than to call up on someone just out of the sky blue, I went ahead and chose to do it, and uh, GT will do it next Sunday. And then if someone wants it the next Sunday, they can have it. Brother Rocket, you want it the next Sunday? Okay. All right, but anyway, uh, uh, that's the way we do it. And so uh, I'm going to do it today, and the word is grace. And uh, grace means it's God's unmerited favor. <clears throat> God's unmerited favor. In other words, there's no way we can merit the grace of God. That's where God loved us and, and died for us when we didn't deserve it. And he certainly did that, didn't he? The Bible said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Romans 3.24 says we're justified freely by his grace. And that amazing salvation never cost us a dime, never cost us any kind of works, any kind of sacrifice on our part, it didn't cost us anything. It's totally free. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. The Bible said in Romans 5, 20, where sin doth abound, grace doth much more Amen. abound. So sin can never override and trump grace. Grace is always bigger, larger, and more powerful than sin. Amen? And so we can never complain, well, it's just too much sin. No, there's not too much violence, too much sin. There's not too much of anything for God's grace to work. God's grace trumps everything and anything. Anywhere, anytime. And it's always good. Amen? 2 Corinthians uh, 2, 2 Corinthians 12. I want us to look at that verse right there. I wanted to sort of dwell there just for a moment. I won't take but about 15 minutes on this one. This is a good, I like this part here, because we, we're always saying that, well, this is just hard, this is just hard, this is just hard to endure, it's just hard to put up with. But, but the Bible says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 about the Apostle Paul, you know, he'd prayed three times, the Bible said thrice, that God removed that thorn that was in his flesh. In other words, God had given Satan uh, uh, some authority uh, to buffet, there was a messenger of the, the Bible said of Satan to buffet Paul every day of his life. Give him a hard time. And he, uh, he prayed that God remove that. And God said in verse, uh, I believe it's verse 12 or verse 9, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am I strong. Isn't that amazing? As he said, my grace is sufficient. In other words, we don't need anything but grace. That's all we need. We don't need anything else. That's what he said. My grace is sufficient. You say, well, if I had this, I had this. If I, did, if I wasn't sick, if I wasn't getting old, if I, if I had this kind of situation, if I had this kind of job, if I, you know, if I, had a, if I could live there in that climate and in that environment, if I lived there, I could do better. No, the Bible said my grace is sufficient. In any situation you're in, his grace is sufficient. It's absolutely sufficient. It doesn't matter. You can be in jail. It's still sufficient. You're in the hospital. It's sufficient. It doesn't matter what condition you're in in life, God's grace is sufficient. And we need to lean heavy upon His grace because that's something that's unmerited. Amen? Hebrews 4.16 says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen? It's called a throne of grace. God's throne is a throne of grace and we can come boldly to this throne of grace. Unmerited favor. You don't have to have any kind of special favor with God to get grace. Amen. You go in the Old Testament in, in the book of Genesis. The Bible said that uh, verse uh, 8. that But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See when the world was going to be destroyed. Because of all the violence and the wickedness. That was up on the earth during that time. God said I'm going to destroy the whole world. Everything in it. Every living thing that breathes. I'm going to destroy it. 
But the Bible said in verse 8, but Noah found grace, favor in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. Did he deserve that? No, he didn't deserve that. But he found grace. God showed grace to Noah when grace didn't, when Noah didn't deserve it. And God saved us, died for us and saved us when we we're unworthy. So. There ain't a one of us can stand this morning and say, thank God I'm a boy, 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 I tell you what, I thank God I'm who I am, where I was born, where I was raised, because God had to look at me. No, God that could have looked over you. God didn't need any of us, right? But by, because of grace, he could see all of us the same. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't die because of you who you were and I was who I am. He died because we're sinners. And all of us stand in need of salvation because all of us were damned, doomed, and going to hell if he hadn't saved us. Amen. Amen. So that's good. God's grace is good. Amen. I told you I was going to get hung up on that. And 2 Peter 3.18 says to grow in grace. Now we're to grow in that. And learn what that means. It don't hurt you to show a little grace to people. So he don't deserve it. Well, you didn't either. Amen. Understand that. Get that up here in that little old pea brain. You don't deserve anything good either. And Jesus didn't die for you because you was good. He died for you because you needed salvation. Because you was a sinner. So who do we think we are when we can't show a little grace to somebody else? Who do you think you are? Something special? No. We're just sinners saved by grace. Now that's strong, but that's true. God, you know God this morning has greeted us when we stand. We're so proud and arrogant. Amen. We stick our wings out like a peacock. We're not deserving of anything but hell. That's all. But God looked down and saw us as a sinful people, wicked, without hope, without God. And Jesus died for every one of us. We did not deserve it. We won't deserve it tonight. We won't deserve it tomorrow or next week. But he showed favor to us because that's something he wanted to do. Because he loved us. Not because we demanded it, asked for it, because he saw we needed him. Amen. Amen. And he wanted us. But we wasn't good enough for him. He had to give us Jesus to make us good enough. Isn't that amazing? We think we're too good. We think we're good. But we weren't even good enough for him. Isn't that amazing? And you know what? The Bible said the world's not even worthy of us. Isn't that something God take an old creature like us? Sinful, wicked, hell bound. But when Jesus has died on the cross and the grace of God appeared unto us and dwells in us, he made us a people that the world says it's not worthy of us. <laughs> it doesn't matter what God can make out of us. Thank God for his grace. I hope you'll get something out of that little short series there. Amen. God's grace. I hope God's grace will shine on us today. We'll have a good day. Rocky, you come and we'll sing some songs. Let's all stand, please.